stop pesticides. It's an initiative that I started this year, 2012. And the whole objective is to bring awareness to folks the crisis at hand. And if we don't stop this crisis, it threatens everything that we have, our world, our ecosystem. Our ecosystem is such a fragile thing. And since the innovation of pesticides in the late 1940s and 50s, pesticides have basically become uh, market diffused, what we re refer to as late majority market diffused. And it's being used on over 90% of our crops. 90%. And the thing is, since the introduction of systemic pesticides in the, in the mid 1990s to their late adop adaption, adoption, in the night in the around 2005 2006 which also marked the beginning of the bee collapse right so the the late major the adoption of systemic pesticides correlates with the crashing of the bees that uh, you know that we simply have to put an end to this because so much is at stake but before I go into what's at stake. The opportunity, as inspired by Coney 2012, is for individuals to make a difference. Individuals like you and me. Individuals who really have no background in pesticides, but just care. We care about our community. We care about the future of our planet for our next generations. We see beyond the greed, beyond, you know, um, the lunacy that's going on. And ultimately, I believe in people like you can make a difference with me. The thing is, Coney 2012 had its problems. The biggest problem it was entity driven. And any entity ultimately gets seduced or corrupt. And greedy. And I think that's probably the biggest flaw with Coney 2012 is most of the money that they raised went towards paying salaries, not towards helping. The opportunity though by launching an individual driven non-entity initiative pesticides stop pesticides which this represents or save our bees is another one I launched this was the first one I launched that as individuals we can make a difference but the, the thing is is you know donating to a group in this community or whatever over 70% of the funds go towards paying salaries, not towards solving the problem. I use, I have a master's in nonprofit administration and management. I know nonprofits. And I worked at nonprofits. I've raised money for nonprofits. And they try to do good. They're a dinosaur, which their time has come. They're obsolete. But the opportunity is for individuals like me and like you to get out there and make a difference. The first thing we need to do is bring awareness to pesticides. So let me give you some ammunition, right? As I mentioned, systemic pesticides are new super pesticides that are water soluble. It's very crucial that you understand water soluble. What you're talking about is taking, um, adding m molecules to H2O whole bunch of string of carbon atoms right um, tobacco I don't know what the molecular string of tobacco but they're all based on tobacco they're they're neurotoxins they're neurotoxins because they don't want to kill the earthworms earthworms neurotoxins don't affect earthworms right they don't have a brain but neurotoxins do affect insects and ultimately will affect birds and other creatures the other thing is if you just want to you know 
do some research. Just research uh, Silent Spring, Silent Night. Watch the videos by that professor who talks about pesticides promoting estrogen and reducing testosterone which basically means this is that we're chemically castrating our animals animals that eat earthworms they're now become toxic bombs because tons and tons of pesticides every July and August are dumped on rice fields around Japan that earthworms eat that then birds eat that then you know basically either die or become chemically castrated where they don't produce other offspring that is why you don't see birds in Japan that much you know go look and if you'll notice behind tractors 20 years ago 30 years ago it was little birds sitting down following the tractor eating the worms they're gone now it's the crows and within I'm guessing within five to ten years those crows will be gone because they're going to be so chemically castrated by pesticides right that they're not going to reproduce or they're going to die so ultimately you may be thinking well what does it matter well our ecosystem is made up of a lot of animals who, who do very specific jobs for example over 70 percent of our food is pollinated by bees now understand honeybees make up less than 1% of the 30,000 plus bee species out there. Less than 1%, right? We only talk about honeybees because there's no, we, we don't cultivate other bees um, for, for industry. Um, you know, carpenter bees and a host of other, right? And there's these little small bees called their solitary bees that go about the business who are even better than bumblebees, better than uh, honeybees in pollination. And no one's tracking them and they're dying. Like mason bees is a good example. So ultimately the problem is, is these bees, unlike us, can't detox when these neural chemicals basically attack them you know they, they die now you may say well you know how are they dying and stuff like that what's well, really simple remember I said the pesticides are water soluble they're getting into our water they're getting into our water table they don't get filtered out by clay and other things it's molecular it goes through that it's in with the water so we are destroying the world's most important asset, the asset of life. The water that is so crucial to humanity, right? To life. We are poisoning. We're destroying. And by destroying this water, we're destroying the very life that needs it by poisoning it with pesticides. Water soluble pesticides. In the past, pesticides would float on the top of the water and finally go up on shore or whatever. Now it's in the water. And research has shown that extremely small amounts, small amounts so small that you can't even detect, will affect insects, bees. And ultimately, I gotta miss my turn here. <laughs> I don't usually go this way. The very thing is, if we do not stop this madness, we thread it all. So, in simple terms, again, let me recap. Pesticides are neurotoxins. The new ones called systemic pesticides, neonicotines, are made, neonicotines, they're made actually from kind of a tobacco, I believe, tobacco, nicotine, right? They are neurotoxins that affect the cognitive levels of insects and other creatures. Um, and ultimately, by putting them on the soil, they get into the worms, the worms are being eaten, and they're affecting other creatures. 
uh, frogs are being affected, I've mentioned everything else. And ultimately, as a result, we're going to lose some of the most important partners that for the last 10,000 years have been our partner. And in the last 60 years, we've waged the chemical warfare on them, right? We have to change our philosophy about what we're doing to the planet. And ultimately, the Indians who, the American Indians who basically killed the buffalo or saw the buffalo die and, and probably saw the mammoths die and a lot of the great, great game that they overhunted and destroyed understood that, the balance. That once you cross this tipping point, there is no return. And we are quickly approaching, if not past, maybe we've passed the point in Japan. I'm telling you, there are no very few insects, bees, that I found this summer. And I would strongly recommend folks looking at Japan, using Japan as a study, because Japan is the number one user of systemic pesticides in the world. They use tons and tons of it. And ultimately, I think the evidence is pretty straightforward there. So stop pesticides, what can you do? Well, number one is go to Facebook and join the group, Stop Pesticides. Invite your friends to stop pesticides. Just conscript them, it's a group. You can conscript them, and conscript them is until you can't conscript anymore. And say, you know, this is important. We have to stop pesticides before it's too late. If you'd like to be active, like me, and be part of the solution, then I would say launch a uh, Stop Pesticides region. So, like, I have Japan, Stop Pesticides. I, you know, there's Belize, Stop Pesticides. Canada, Stop Pesticides. Um, you know, there are 193 countries represented in the United Nations. We, we need to have every group, every company out, country out there um, with Stop Pesticides. It's that simple. So, that's what you can do. Join a group and start from there. Bring awareness. I have a lot of talks. Get active in the discussion. See what you can do. I'm setting up what I call bee sanctuaries, which are areas that are void of pesticides, hopefully, that I can encourage the, adapt, the, the reintroduction of bees by providing them the food and the safety and water. So I have, I've established five bee sanctuaries there are different stages, and ultimately, I'll be doing more. So, thanks for listening. Kind of a long talk, but it's important. Stop pesticides before they stop us.